Why is it important to see and think in terms of systems, especially when you're working with people? I'm Jane Peterson of the Human Systems Institute in Aurora, Oregon, here in the US. And as the name of our institute indicates, we think systems are pretty important. Even if you're an accomplished systems thinker, being able to visualize systems is crucial to intervening wisely in them. So a system is a group of people or things that are in relationship with one another such that they create something greater than any individual part. So for example, a carburetor, the thing out of your car, by itself it's useless. In a car, however, it regulates the mixture of air and gas and thus controls the rate of combustion of the engine. And out of this relationship between the carburetor and the gas and the air and the engine and the wheels, we get something called transportation. So this ability to go quickly from one place to another as a human being emerges out of the interaction of all these parts of your car. Nature is the best builder of complex adaptive systems. And so let's dig a little bit more into systems and then look at how to apply them to people relationships. So let's take this forest that is burning to the southeast of my small farm here. Um, it's a really big fire. And we think of fire as human beings in terms of the loss of trees, um, people's houses, animals, and unfortunately, in this case, people who have lost their lives in this fire. So we think of something like a forest fire or a forest, even, in human terms. If I was to say, think of a tree, most people will visualize a simple tree, single tree. And what we think of is what a tree provides us, like lumber or fruit, or if it's a hot day, shade. But here in the um, Pacific Northwest where I live, trees are key elements in a forest system. So I live very near a really lovely mountain called Mount Hood. And there are evergreen trees, evergreen fir trees that line the canyons, the, these deep canyons that, are, that flank the mountain and then come into the, the flats where I live. Now, um, like I say, we think of a tree, like lumber or maybe a bunch of trees, but we don't think of trees as a living system, as a community. And these trees do amazing things in our landscape as a community, as a system. In the winter here, we have a lot of rain, and these trees act like a sponge. They absorb the water and hold it in their branches and their fir needles. They slow the water as it runs down these canyons. They hold the topsoil in place. They keep the creeks and rivers clean and flowing. And by doing, by moderating the way water goes through that landscape, they help raise and stabilize the water table so that in the summer, when it's hot and dry, my little farm's well has water. So that whole system between the well on my farm here, kind of in the flats of the valley, and the way the trees moderate water coming down the mountain, we're all part of the same system, a watershed. Now, the interesting thing about systems is that they can change their state, sometimes dramatically. So before the fires, we had this wonderful tree community that modified the water and stored it in the landscape. And this is often what we're trying to do as systems. We want to change the way we work. So let's say we, ha we have a work team and we want them to go from fighting and bickering and not getting tasks done to being collaborative and productive. Or say, um, we're a couple and we're on the edge of divorce, divorce and we want to find our way back to harmony. So systems have different states that they settle into and those states can change. Now using our forest again as an example, as soon as a big chunk of that forest is gone, it's destroyed by this fire, the state of the forest system and the watershed probably will change. Without that living community of trees to moderate the effect of rain, that's going through that, those canyons. Topsoil begins to wash away, washing down into the canyons where the creeks are. The more it rains, the more the soil washes away, the more the trees, creeks and rivers get clogged, which can smother fish and other aquatic life, the more the edges of the rainforest are being affected. And so we begin to actually um, destabilize that whole system. 
So now we no longer have something that moderates the climate, that keeps the water in the landscape, and who knows what's going to happen to the farms in the valley. We may not have as much water. Now nature is amazing and often can regenerate from the seed bank in the soil. And yet if we change more than half of that forest, if we change more than half of an ecosystem, we don't get back the same forest that we lost. It will have changed state, possibly irreversibly. So systems are complex and changeable, and sometimes they can kind of tip and change quickly. So, and what family that has a really um, difficult teen, teenager or what fam work group that is struggling doesn't want a positive quick change, right? We really like that when systems change to our benefit. So how does understanding systems apply to people? Well, let's say that our couple goes to see a therapist and this therapist is um, a dev devotee of cause and effect thinking, which most of us tend to rely on. So the therapist sees that the man gets angry very easily and that his wife accommodates him and says the man has an anger problem and tries to get him to change, which he may not appreciate. If on the other hand, we took a systemic view, we might discover, say, that this fellow's grandfather was really traumatized in a war and he came home with post-traumatic stress disorder. As a consequence of that, he's unable to regulate his own anger. He has flashbacks, he just has a very difficult time settling back into his family life. And the family may not have had the resources to do anything about it, so everybody begins to accommodate or placate or hide. Maybe, the, maybe this fellow learned to hide and his father learned to hide in his bedroom. Now the whole family system is involved with grandpa's PTSD. His, his father learns this pattern and does the same in our, the member of our couple's um, family of origin. And so he learns that men can be angry and other people have to accommodate them. So now we start to, to see his behavior not as something that he's doing wrong, not as his fault, but as a pattern that has been uh, learned by a system accommodating to a traumatic event. Now we have a much more complex understanding of this person's behavior. We're much more likely to be able to work with both partners to shift the pattern of unregulated anger on the one side and accommodation and placating on the other. Because we're now able to involve both partners in um, creating a change in the way the system works. The same thing can happen in our workplace. It's always so easy to fire an individual, to blame somebody for the problem. We believe, for example, if we could just change the marketing manager, everything will improve. I recall a case that was done a number of years ago where um, the owner of a small business uh, told us that she had hired and fired something like four marketing managers within a two year period of time. And uh, she just said, you know, it's so hard to find a marketing manager. If we had not taken the time to look systemically at this, to look at the linkages and all these relationships over time, we wouldn't have realized that she was actually um, reflecting on her own experience being in the role of a marketing person and not trusting marketing. Not, not believing that it could be done properly. And she brought that into her new position, her new company. And every time she'd hire somebody, she would have a lot of fear and she would think it was their fault. So we were able to expand our view, not just looking at the marketing manager, but looking at how did this, how did this happen? Were there other roles in the company that she couldn't fill? Was it just marketing? What was the history with marketing? And so we were able to unpack the whole systemic linkage and help her shift the way she approached that situation. Now, thinking in systems isn't as easy as our kind of lazier cause and effect approach to problem solving, but it's much more effective. It doesn't involve blame and judgment. It really involves understanding how things work. And my favorite way to really work with systems is through systemic constellations. Constellation work gives you a way to visualize systems, to actually see and reveal the dynamics that are keeping these patterns in play. 
And once we can understand that, we also begin to understand where effective intervention is going to be possible. So at this point, I'd like to recommend a skinny little book. It's called uh, Thinking in Systems. And the author is Donella Meadows. It's D-O-N-E-L-L-A Meadows, M-E-A-D-W-O-S. And it's a great way to get an introduction to systems. So um, I also have, uh, we have two course offerings here at the Institute that I would be delighted to, uh, to have you join us for. And I'll just briefly um, share my screen here. So you can see these. So uh, we offer two courses that involve systemic thinking and this ability to actually visualize what's going on in a system to work with your clients or to work if you're the, the leader of an organization or a leader of a family. And the, the one is Organizational Constellations and it's an online course. Um, and it's about a 10 session course that takes place over roughly five months. It starts October 22nd. The other course that we offer is the Art of Constellation Facilitation Program, and it's a longer program. It's working with families. It also has a first module that's online and involves um, the, the inquiry part of the um, working with families. And then we do um, some more coaching as part of the other modules. If you'd like to see me work with systems, um, the next workshop we have coming up is our Treasure Hunt Constellation, and that's going to be looking at couples dynamics, and that's scheduled for October 15th. So um, I hope that you now are intrigued by systems, want to understand them better, want to learn how they work, to be able to recognize their patterns, and uh, that um, possibly I'll see you in one of our courses. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.